Morning, how are you? Um, just getting started right now. Uh, sorry, I was muted. Didn't realize I'm used to having it my way. My, uh, good morning, host. Rabbi. It's hosted by someone else, so uh, I was muted. So good morning, good to see everyone. Um, we're going to uh, begin in just a second. I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to uh, point out that all the, all the classes being given today are sponsored in memory of Stanley Aichira, who was one of the founders of the Sephardic Community Alliance, which has grown tremendously uh, over the years. And uh, in particular, during this crisis, um, we, we've seen the SCA really step up in terms of uh, spreading Torah and the availability of Torah uh, and other important messages and themes to our community. So Hazak Baruch to them and Hazak Baruch to the, to the Chira family for sponsoring the day and everything that we say today uh, is Lui Nishmato. Okay, so uh, my, my class today is a little different than what I would normally give. I'm usually going to, uh, to give something that's uh, specific to Torah sources and uh, halachot and philosophy and the like. Um, but uh, thinking about Israel um, and Yom HaAtzma'ut, um, I, I began to think about the fact that um, Israel uh, is not far away from uh, becoming 100 years old. Um, we're, we're in the year 2020 which means that uh, 2040 is, is only 20 years away and 2048 is only 28 years away, uh, which may seem like a long time, but the truth is it's not. Um, and um, that we're, we're, it's, it's, it's appropriate and it's a good time to start asking ourselves the question that in the year 2048, uh, where Israel will be 100 years old, Bezrat Hashem, um, you know, what does Israel look like? And uh, in order to answer that, I have a couple of uh, really thought questions and ideas to put out there. Um, there are things that, um, well, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let the things speak for themselves. Let's, let's watch. Um, so, uh, let me see one second, just controlling my uh, slides here. So, oops. Um, so, what we start with uh, this picture, which is a, a very inspiring picture from May 14th, 1948. I think it should be familiar to everyone. Of course, it's uh, David Ben-Gurion standing uh, in, a, 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 in a private home in, in Tel Aviv um, and uh, declaring the modern day state of Israel, May 14th, 1948, uh, a very important and powerful moment. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the pictures are staged appropriately. They're very provocative, evocative, um, you know, with Herzl behind and the uh, Israeli flags behind him. Um, it's, it's a powerful moment. And um, really, um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful picture because you have David Ben-Gurion standing there and um, he's this short little figure, but you can see even in this grainy photograph that uh, whatever he lacks in, in, in height and physical stature and physical power, uh, he has in, in, in personal presence and perseverance and persistence. Um, and um, he very well uh, embodies the, the, the nascent state of Israel being developed there. Um, and of course, the picture of Herzl behind him, who was the, the visionary of the modern day state of Israel um, and, and, and so on. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot about this picture. But at the time, um, you know, as, as powerful a picture it is and whatever it means to us, because now we, you know, we can look back at it 72 years later. Um, at the time, um, one might say, uh, this is crazy, right? It's a bunch of guys in a house standing around the table, uh, taking a picture saying that uh, they have a state and there's 45 million Arabs surrounding them, all saying, we're gonna kill you by tomorrow. Uh, and for Israel, the immediate concerns, as everyone knows, was the, the concerns of existence. Um, and very quickly, we know, that Israel was attacked on all sides, um, and uh, it didn't take long, but uh, over, over a couple of months, Israel was able to, to raise the flag and, and succeed and, and create a little bit of a state, uh, not much of one in 1948, it was less than a million people. Um, you know, the, uh, the, they didn't have much uh, in many different ways, but um, there was a state. And of course we know that the, the concept of Israel's existence and it being able to, to, to be a state and to be there uh, was a question that was questioned over and over again for many years of Israel's uh, beginning of its existence, most notably in 1967 with the Six-Day War. But uh, as we know in the Six-Day War, 
um, what, what started as a, a, a threat to our existence actually turned into expansion and hope. Um, in 1973, we know that the existence was challenged once again, but uh, we know in 73, even though the cost was extremely high, um, again, we were able to expand and show that we were going to stick around. Uh, and then, you know, maybe even a little bit later in the 1980s, dealing with the PLO and the Intifada and, and stretching into the 90s, there might have been some concern about whether or not um, we would exist as a state. Um, but um, I think that, that we, you know, we, through all of those and maybe through continually to dealing with all of those, we made it pretty clear that we are going to exist. And even though today we have our questions, uh, you know, we have Iran and Hezbollah and Hamas and so on, um, who all want to kill us and maybe are trying to acquire either uh, nuclear weapons or, um, you know, smart weapons or drones or some combination of it, uh, BDS and what have you. Um, the concern that existed in, on May 15th, 1948, uh, May 14th, 1948, excuse me, as, as um, that would be, would we exist? Um, it, it's less of a question today. And I think it'll hopefully be even less of a question uh, at, at the year 2048, uh, where Israel, Bezrat Hashem, gets there um, and, and exists in the year 2048. And the question that Israel will face will less be a question of what kind of existence, that not will we exist, but what kind of existence do we want to have? Uh, what kind of state, what kind of country, what kind of Medina will Israel be? Again, the question is, we started with, hey, let's just get some facts on the ground. Let's just have something. Uh, but now we've gotten to the point where it's pretty clear we're going to have something. We're going to have a state of Israel. And now the question is, what is that state of Israel going to be? Um, and for that, I, I, I want to quote uh, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. And uh, he wrote, Rabbi Sachs is one of the most eloquent, articulate speakers uh, of, of our time. I would say Jewish or otherwise, but certainly Jewish. And um, his, his, um, his book, um, known as uh, Future Tense, he's written many different works, but uh, his book, Future Tense, which maybe is a little less popular, it was written about 10 years ago, um, addresses a lot of different questions, but it's, it's basically a uh, visionary look forward at what uh, is the, the, the meaning of the Jewish people in the 21st century uh, and the meaning of the state of Israel. And um, he, in that book, uh, to, you know, towards the middle, but it's a key part of what his book is about, talks about the difference between a state and a society. Um, and uh, basically what uh, he says in, in his language is that Israel has done a wonderful job of establishing a state. We have, uh, a, we have uh, our borders, we have an army, we have a government, uh, we have taxation and so on. That, that we've done a fantastic job of creating a state. And um, that's the best you could do to begin, he says. But um, the, the Torah um, has two different views of what Israel has to be. On one level, the Torah does want Israel to create a, a, some version of a state. And we see this in the conversation that Moshe has about uh, es establishing a king and later how that plays out with Shemuel uh, and, and uh, establishing the kingship. Um, so, so there is some version of, of the Torah saying that we should have a state. But what Rabbi Sachs says, and I believe is true, is that the Torah is less concerned about the type of state that we have than it is about the type of society that we have. What kind of way do we deal as a people? What kind of people are we? That's the question that he asks. And um, he, he, in, in uh, you know, Rabbi Sachs's terms, the state is established through some kind of contract. Uh, but the society uh, is different. It's a covenant that exists between people. Um, and, uh, and, and of course, as if you know even a little bit about Rabbi Sachs, he's all about that concept of the covenant and the way people uh, are treating one another. So the question that, that I want to go forward is, okay, Israel has this state. It's established. It's well established. It's not going anywhere. The question is, so what kind of society um, does Israel have and maybe should Israel have um, going forward, as it gets to 100 years old, what can we expect from Israeli society? What do we want to expect? What do we want to demand even from Israeli society? So um, I, I, I'm going to talk about over the next uh, 15 minutes or so about eight different points that I think are key aspects of a society. And please, I'm not uh, the, uh, 
the, 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 the be all end all on this. But I think these are all important things that we should talk about and that matter about the state of Israel. And that is its economy, its education, its diplomacy, its healthcare, its leadership, its religion, its diaspora, its relationship to the diaspora and its resources. These are eight areas of the society of Israel that I'd like to talk about. They are by no means an exhaustive list, but um, they definitely uh, give us what to think about, uh, especially as we're contemplating what is Israel all about um, as, we, as we move forward and what does Israel have to be about when it hits the age 100. Um, and, and just before I go one step further, um, I, I want you to think, and, and I actually spent some time thinking about this, um, of another country that hit 100 and what the differences were. Um, so look at the United States of America. Um, the United States of America was established effectively in, 19, in 1776. Um, what did the United States of America look at look like at 1876? Um, and you know, I don't know how well people know their history or not, but some major events happened between 1776 and 1876, most notably in, in, in the 1860s, uh, the Civil War, right? The whole, uh, when, when America estab was established in 1776, one of the big questions that they had was this, the, the question of slavery. Uh, there were people who felt strongly that it was necessary for the country, and there were people who thought that it was a terrible thing for the country. And it took a long time for that to get worked out. Of course, it got worked out in a very uh, bitter war uh, in, in, in the 1860s, which we call the Civil War. Uh, but the point is that America in 1876 looked very different than it did in 1776. And that's just one aspect. There are many other ways, but that's just one aspect. So will Israel look very different? And what ways will it look different? So my, my, my uh, I, I guess my theory here is that uh, these are eight ways that Israel needs to look different. Let's see uh, how it does. So first, let's talk about the economy. Um, now, the economy certainly looks very different today uh, than it looked in, in uh, 1948. In 1948, Israel uh, was borderline a communist society, um, the kibbutz being one of its key backdrops. And, um, and uh, you know, so the, 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 it, 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 it's interesting that Israel is certainly not that, right? And today, when you think economy in Israel, no doubt you think about the concept of how Israel is startup nation. Right? And uh, Israel over the last, um, I'd say uh, 30 years, um, really did a tremendous job of uh, privatizing a lot of, um, a, a lot of government owned organizations. Um, and uh, that really opened up the possibility for the economy to go grow tremendously. And we know that Israel is phenomenal in terms of its technology, and its, its uh, development of technology and, and what that's done for its economy. In many ways, Israel is an economic world leader and that's fantastic and amazing and something that we're tremendously proud of and we hope that will grow. Um, of course, uh, one of the things that even startup nations uh, questions is they're great at startups, but how do they figure out how to keep it? Right? And in other words, uh, a lot of the startups and the successful startups have been bought out, bought out by bigger companies. They found that Israel is really good at creating these brand new companies and growing them really quickly. But in terms of giving them longevity, uh, not so much. So that's a question that they have. But there's a much bigger question that impacts Israel is that despite this tremendous startup nation growth that Israel has had, um, Israel still has a tremendous amount of poverty, uh, much more so than what we're used to in the United States of America. Um, at last check, um, what, what I read is that there are 465,000 families, 465,000 families in Israel that live below the poverty line, uh, which means close to, to, to two something million people, which includes about um, a million children, right? meaning a million children are growing up poor in Israel. And uh, if I were to go back to Rabbi Sachs and ask what kind of society does, should the Jewish people have? Um, I don't believe it's a society that has, uh, uh, that tolerates a million Jewish children, and maybe they're not all Jewish, maybe some of them are Arab, but a million children under its watch um, being un under the poverty line. I think that's something that uh, um, Israel really has to consider and really has to work on, is how does it create um, economic opportunities for those at the bottom? How does it lower the level of poverty 
Um, and in particular, um, one area where we know there's a great level of poverty is in the Haredi world. Um, and um, how, do, how does that get addressed? Um, I think it's something that people have definitely started to talk about and, and definitely are concerned about. Um, but there's a lot of movement that needs to happen. Um, and hopefully um, the, the, the beginnings of the movement that have started to happen will, will take a uh, larger form and get more serious development. But one of the first things that I think that certainly Israel in the year 2048 needs to consider is how can it create an economy where um, uh, better than a situation of, of one fifth of its population uh, is living in poverty. I think that's something that's enormously important for the state of Israel to, to tackle and hopefully by 2048 it does. So that's issue number one is the economy of Israel. Issue number two is something that you wouldn't think would be a problem from Israel, but actually is, uh, and that is education. Now, education, it's interesting because on some levels, Israel is a very highly educated uh, uh, society. And uh, you look at the top uh, uh, chart there and you see how many uh, institutions of higher education exist in Israel in the year 2009 and it's grown since then. Uh, it's, it's a very high number relative to the number of people that live in the country. But at the same time, one of the things that we're knowing, that we know, is that Israel's educational system is not doing so well. Um, the uh, OECD, which measures uh, the different um, educational systems throughout the, uh, the world, ranks Israel as 32nd, um, which is very, very low for a country of Jews. Uh, hard to believe that that would be the case, but it is. And if you look at the graph on the bottom, um, uh, as to what Israel spends as a percent on education on its GDP, you see it's very low uh, and, and, and it's really, it's a concern. Um, so, so Israel's educational system, uh, they know this. They, they know this is a big problem. Um, I don't know how much they're, they're, they're doing to, to attack it. It's not a top priority, but it, it, it really needs to be because you would think that the people of the book and, and the state of Israel would be one of the best educational systems around. Um, and and, and it's, it's not, it's, it's fractured, it's underfunded. Um, uh, there, you know, again, you could look at the Haredi world and see that um, they're, they're not teaching their, their, their children um, the things that they would need to succeed in the modern world. Um, but it's not just that, it's also how Israel teaches its Arab citizens, and even the, the general school systems, the Mamakti, Mamakti Dati, are both suffering as well. So, so Israel really, this is an area like America, really needs to get working on its educational system. It's hard to believe that we would say such a thing, but it hasn't been a tremendous area of focus, and it's something that needs to become one uh, for Israel to succeed in, in the year 2048. Here's one that I think Israel has done a fabulous job and hopefully will continue to do a fabulous job. And that's our place amongst the nations. Um, you know, Israel is really small, but uh, you know, like, like Ben-Gurion, um, it's, uh, it's got that oomph, it's got that power. Um, and and uh, to Netanyahu's credit, um, one of the things that he's done really, really well uh, is to, is to uh, be a statesman and to get out there and, uh, and to make Israel have connections, be felt, be important all around the world, even with some of the people that maybe, you know, we have our suspicions about, we have our concerns about, but needing to be able to be a, a significant player among the nations is something that we need for the state of Israel that we, and that, that uh, uh, again, to Netanyahu's credit, to Shimon Peres's credit, uh, and, and, and to the credit of lots of others, uh, Israel's diplomacy uh, has really grown by leaps and bounds over the years. And it's something that we hope will continue to grow and that, that uh, Israel be recognized as a world leader in 2048. This is one of the visions of the Torah. The Torah wants uh, the, 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 the Israel, the, the, the state of Israel, the place of Israel, the Jewish people to be a place that other nations look to for guidance, for advice, uh, for significance. So, so I think that in 2048, we look for this aspect of Israel to grow and grow and grow. Um, and uh, thank God, this is something that I feel like is on the right track, um, but it's something that we should always make sure continues to develop and grow and, and, and be fed. The next aspect is healthcare. Now, again, this is a, a, a double-sided one, much like education. In some ways, 
Israel's healthcare is phenomenal. Um, we, we have some tremendous hospitals, Shadet Tzedek pictured there, and Hadassah, and, and, and many others. Um, um, and uh, but, and, and as, as noted by the image on the bottom, Israel is a, a you know, startup, uh, startup nation isn't only about uh, technology. A lot of the technology is medical technology, biotech. Um, so Israel is a world leader in many ways in healthcare. But amazingly enough, Israel's healthcare system, as represented by the image on the right, is greatly overburdened. Um, and um, you know, Israel was the was really one of the first countries to take a super aggressive approach to uh, to the current crisis, the coronavirus. And 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 people weren't even sure why is Israel shutting down the country as 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 drastically and as quickly as they can. Do they know something that we don't know? Um, and it's possible that that uh, was a big part of it is they did see the graphs and charts and so on. But one of the also one of the other things that they knew is that um, if 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 we thought New York City was going to be overwhelmed, they knew Israel could not handle uh, a large number of cases because Israel, without the coronavirus, um, it, its its hospitals are greatly overtaxed, greatly overburdened. Um, it's very challenging to handle even a regular day there, let alone a crisis situation. And one of the things that Israel really needs to, to work towards is investing more in its healthcare uh, and provide, even though they have a, a socialized healthcare and there's a certain degree of healthcare for all that, that maybe America uh, might aspire to, but in other ways, um, Israel really needs to be uh, making sure that there's, there's access to healthcare for all the people, especially uh, as we said, uh, uh, the poor and those who can't afford it. So it is something that Israel really has to work towards. The next topic is leaders. Um, and and uh, one only uh, look at the last year or two and see that Israel's got a little bit of a problem. And this is not a knock on, on any of their current leaders. Um, but um, the question that I'm asking is, where does Israel, where does Israel get its leaders from? Um, and uh, I think growing up, you know, and I'll, I'm 45 years old. So I think in the past, pre-Netanyahu, um, where did Israel get its leaders? Israel got its leaders um, from its wars, from the military. And um, I think that that's the, the, you know, or the founders of the state, you know, that's those two areas, the founders and the, and the military leaders, and many were the same, um, were, were great cauldrons of leadership, uh, great ways for people to demonstrate their leadership skills, to hone their leadership skills, and for people to have confidence in those people. Um, as Israel, you know, Israel hasn't been in a, uh, 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 what, what we'll call a successful war, like uh, 1967, and maybe you'll call it 73. It hasn't been in that kind of war in a really, really long time. Um, and therefore, its leaders haven't inspired the, the level of confidence, uh, not from, a, you know, you could argue Sharon uh, from, from, from the Lebanon war, but um, since Sharon really, uh, you know, Omer, Barak, they did not, uh, they, they are not, they, they were not as inspiring in terms of leaders for the people. And uh, Netanyahu certainly has, has uh, you know, had his hold on the leadership of, of, the, of the country. Um, and and uh, whether people like him or don't like him, and obviously there's a big split on that in, in Israel today, the question is, who's next? You know, who, where are the next leaders going to come from? You know, one of the things that the Torah shows that is fantastic about Moshe Rabbeinu is that he grooms Yehoshua to take over to be uh, the leader after him. And the question is, Who's going to be the leader after Netanyahu, and who's going to be the leader after that? Um, where do where do the leaders come from? So the question is, it's not really clear. But if you look at some of the other people that uh, have been, you know, uh, the leaders or aspiring leaders in Israel, so you'll see Gantz, who's uh, you know military, same same kind of cut as what we had before. Okay, maybe. And uh, interestingly, Lapid, uh, who comes out of the media, uh, which is interesting, and maybe the media is a source for, for leadership, who knows. Um, but it's, it's really a question is, where are the next leaders from Israel going to come from? Are they going to be the, uh, the, the tech leaders, you know, startup leaders? Are they going to be, um, are they going to be rabbis? Are, where, who is going to be the next group of leaders? And I, I don't believe Netanyahu will be running for prime minister in 2048. Um, so, so who will? Uh, what type of person? Um, and, and how are we training those types of people? How are we developing those types of people? I think that's a big question that Israel really uh, needs to be asking itself. 
I don't know the answer. Uh, and I don't know if anyone's working on the answer, but I, I think it's a big, big question um, that, that is something that requires tremendous thought because it really matters who's going to be the leader. As we've seen about Netanyahu and Sharon and, and Rabin before them, who leads the nation greatly determines the direction that it heads and where it, it, it puts its resources. So I think those are, you know, how we develop those people is very significant. Next thing that I wanted to bring out there, and, and I kind of got to get to the end, is where, what is the place of religion in Israel? Which is another question that's crazy to ask, but I think it's important. On some levels, we know that Israel is a place that tolerates many different types of tefillah and different types of religion, but at the same time, there's tremendous splits between the, the, uh, those that are considered uh, the Haredim and, uh, and Tzioni Dati and so on and so forth, and there needs to be some kind of sense of the place of, of religion. Uh, it's interesting, um, you know, Rabbi Sachs in his book, Future Tense, that I mentioned before, says that in some ways he would prefer Israel become more like America and create uh, a, a greater separation of church and state. And he thinks that actually that would be better for the religion in Israel than worse. Uh, he thinks that when religion has power, uh, it loses its influence um, and something to think about, uh, certainly a book to read. Um, one of the huge questions that has to be asked about Israel 2048 is what's its relationship going to be uh, with, other, with other Jewish communities? You know, one of the big, big questions that we have um, is, you know, for years, uh, Israel had to be propped up by America and the American Jewish community played a ma major role in supporting Israel in lots of different ways. As Israel, actually the, 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 the Jewish community in Israel grows larger than the Jewish community in America and probably grows stronger in many ways. Uh, and if that trend continues, so what will it be like? Um, will Israel take care of the American Jewish community? Will Israel take care of other Jewish communities? What role will Israel play in 2048? Uh, it's an interesting one, and I think one that Israel certainly has to be thinking about. I think it is thinking about, um, and uh, you know how it relates to all the diaspora communities um, in, in a time where it's no longer a state, but it's a society. Uh, the last thing that I think is, is uh, something that's very significant uh, and certainly something we could think about now is we're in a global crisis uh, and we're seeing what it's like to be in a global crisis. And if we thought that 2008 was a global crisis or, or, or 2001 was a global crisis, what we're finding is those were not really true full-fledged global crises the way that this can be. And this, this could be worse than it is. Um, and we're seeing that the ecology and, 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 and uh, you know, the, the way that we interact with the world around us, nature can play, can wreak havoc. Um, and no doubt one of the major concerns that, are, that, are, that will happen by 2048 um, is water. Um, the, the planet as, you know, provided we can continue to grow and not be killed off by pandemics, um, may not sustain the need for water, which is life for people, um, uh, in, in the years to come. And there's only one country in the entire world that is net water positive. In the entire world, only Israel is net water positive, meaning it creates more water than it consumes. Um, and many countries are very, very far behind. Um, this wonderful book uh, that I picture here on the left, it's a, it's a great read for anyone interested in, in reading something, especially now that we have time. Um, Let There Be Water is Israel's solution for a water-starved world. Um, I highly recommend reading this book. Um, where Israel can really, really play tremendously, a tremendous leadership role, yes. as it does in security uh, and some other ways. Um, I think that this is something that by the time we get to 2048, Israel will be a showing our flowers. So she's sending back her flowers. Oh, oh. Steve, if oh. you can mute that. Um, so so um, oh. I think, I think that. that's a very significant thing that we need to consider. Um, what thinking about in 2048. So um, to quickly recap, um, you know, we're, we're blessed. We have this modern miracle. Um, and for, for, for the early parts of the state, the question was, could it survive? And I, I think we now know it's going to survive. But now it's going to be an adult. And uh, the question is, as an adult, what does it do? Um, and it's not enough to just say that we have a Jewish state that protects us. It's great. That's important. 
but uh, we know that 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 uh, we need more and that it, it needs to be more hashem has a bigger picture for us than it just being a state it needs to also be a, a great society um, i've laid out a couple of things here that i think are very significant things that that um, we as concerned people for israel have to think about and uh, to the extent that we can make contributions uh, towards the development of these things we definitely need to consider it and think about it anyway that's my uh that's my pitch for today. Um, my hope is that just like we did, we made miracles today to, to have a state of Israel, that uh, we do the miraculous. These, some of these things are very challenging, very difficult problems to address. But me, um, Ka'am Israel, who, who's like the Jewish people? Uh, nobody. Let's, let's address these problems. Let's, let's take these areas of, uh, of challenge and turn them into areas of opportunity. And Bezrat uh, Hashem, by the year 2048, We'll be able to look back and say, look at what a tremendous society uh, Israel is. Look at what a tremendous place Israel has created to, to live in and to be a, a, a true or lagoyim. Happy to take any questions if anyone wants to ask. Um, you know, just unmute yourself or throw it into the chat. Yes, <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Zaka Baruch. Zaka Okay, I'll take it from now. Oh, I have a question, John. Yeah, go, question. Um, what about uh, immigration to Israel and uh, the impact of that on the society? And what should we be focusing on? And, you know. It's a good question. We didn't really talk about immigration. Um, immigration has not been, um, you know, for since, um, I would say since the Russians um, immigrated to Israel. I don't think Israel has had a major... Um, uh, influx of people. Um, Israel can handle immigration if it needed to. Uh, you know, how many? I mean, look, there's figure in the rest of the world, I forget the numbers, but I think it's something along the lines of just slightly more than, a hundred. you know, if all the Jews in Israel were to come to Israel um, all at once, it would just slightly over double the population. Um, that's not something that it would that would be easily done, but at the same time, it's not it's not uh, utterly impossible either. So, uh, but it's not something that's really happening right now on, on a massive scale. Could that happen? Certainly, we know that it could because, uh, but but it would be a change from something that that's uh, necessarily happening. Do we need all of the Jews in Israel? That's not the trend today. Um, uh, it's not the trend anybody's working. Not Israel and not the diaspora. Um, so, so I kind of left that one, but it's a good question. But there's also the rise of anti-Semitism. We don't know that if this tide is going to turn, and it seems to be trending that right now. It's possible, but that hasn't so far led to significant um, uh, immigration into Israel, even from places like France, where it's it's uh, more serious than what we experienced. Um, they're, they're still hanging in there. They're not. It's not massive. Um, so, so. So I, I'm not going to say it's not important, and I'm not going to say it's not significant. Again, the Aliyah concept it was always significant to Israel, but um, it's not a. Um, um, I don't. I don't know how much it will shape this, the future state of Israel. But again, I'm not saying it's not. I just <laughs> limited amount of time, and I, and I picked some some other things that I thought were significant. Rabbi, there's one thing that I believe you left off your list, and that is peace. The current status is untenable for a long-term period there has to be a way to resolve the situation the election crisis that we've had over the last year and a half is all attributable to the fact that 20 percent of the electorate is arab and it has to be addressed it's growing we cannot sustain the present situation so I, you know, I, I, I left peace off on purpose as well. Um, I did put diplomacy on purpose um, because I think that we have, in many ways, created a great deal of peace with a lot of the the, the people that uh, were out to get us. Um, you know, we're, we're out to get the state of Israel. By that I mean uh, places like uh, Saudi Arabia or Qatar or uh, you know uh, African nations. Um, so I think there has been a tremendous level of peace. And I think that, again, the existence of Israel, even as is, it's not, there's not, it's not ideal. Uh, it can't last, but we've been saying it can't last for a long time, and it's lasted. Um, 
do, do you know, the, 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 the Palestinian situation, um, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think anybody knows how that will get resolved. But um, I think that we, we go back to Golda Meir, uh, where she says that that, that situation will, will fix itself, more or less, um, when they want to um, uh, uh, love their children more than they want to kill ours. And um, they're not there yet. They, they still want to kill us more than they want to be okay themselves. At least their leadership is that way, and at least a significant percentage of their population is that way. Um, Israel probably is going to continue to live with that kind of um, neighbor uh, for as long as they have to. Um, might we be able to make some 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 uh, levels of, of overtures? I think we've made many overtures. They've turned them all down. Um, might we try and uh, uh, influence them? It's very hard to, to influence them. They have to want it themselves. Um, and I think everyone knows that. I think many people have told them. I think even today... Uh, many Arab cultures, ma many Arab leaders are telling them, guys, this, this is it. This is what you got to do. This is what you have to do. This, this is, these are the people you have to deal with. We're going to deal with Israel. You have to deal with Israel. Um, you know, we'll see. Look, just like, um, um, you know, uh, Netanyahu will not be the prime minister in 2048, neither will Abbas. So uh, we'll, we'll, you know, the, the Abbas and, and some of his cronies um, have had a, a, a stranglehold on 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 the on the process they've they've been corrupt they've stolen billions of dollars they've they've uh misappropriated billions of dollars the question uh, is going to be are they going to be are, 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 is there going to be someone that that uh, can step up in their leadership void it's a question but i i don't think uh, i don't think israel can do more than much more than what it's doing right now. But if they can, so, so be it. And, and, and yes, it's something that's left off the list. Historically, what you're saying is true, but there's a fact that's changed over the last five years by the formation of the Arab list, where they now control over 10% of the Knesset and the Knesset cannot move by eliminating 10% from the voting bloc. You have to address I that 10 Arab, I think the Arab list is different than the Palestinian problem. They're two different problems. Um, and and I, you know, I've, I've spoken with some of the people on the Arab list and, and that, that the Arab list represents. Um, I think they're two separate issues. So that's not a Palestinian issue. It's a separate issue. It's a um, first step. I, I, think, I, I don't think, I, I think there's a big deadlock in the, in the country right now. You know, I, I'm not, I think everyone knows there's a big deadlock in the country right now, uh, politically. But I, I think it's, it's not only that issue. That is a contributing issue, but it's certainly not the only issue. Um, it is an issue that, that has to be addressed. Um, but I think it also, uh, some of the things that, that that would be addressed by is, you know, some of the things that we talked about, the healthcare, the economy, the education, uh, and so on. Um, I think what those, uh, you know, the, 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 not I think, I know, uh, I, I uh, have spoken to a number of, of of uh, second level leaders and, and uh, Israeli Arabs. And what they're looking for isn't the Palestinians. What they're looking for is internally, how do we ta create a, a society that takes care of those people? So it's a different problem than the, than the, uh, than, than, than the Palestinian problem. And listen, um, from the Torah, the concept of taking care of the ger uh, is important, meaning the recognition that someone lives in the ger here, meaning not a convert, but someone that lives in your society that's not Israel, that's not Jewish. Um, and the Torah cares that we take care of those people. Um, it doesn't mean that they, you know, that they run the country, they don't, um, but it does mean that they get taken care of. So, so there's a feeling, there's certainly some challenges and some opportunities there. And, um, uh, and, and no doubt that is, plays a significant role in the political uh, dead, uh, deadlock that exists today, but it's, it's it's less about the it's less about the borders and and the security than it is about um, the type of society that we have, which was kind of the, the overall picture that we're talking about. That has to impact not only the Jewish citizens but uh, the Druze, the Bedouin, uh, the Arab, and so on. Uh, those things have to be available to them as well, um, and and that's really the issue that they're having. Um, Okay. Uh, Thank you. Great class.
Thank you. Thank you. Listen, I, like I said, I, you know, to, to say that I have uh, the answers to all of this, uh, believe me, I do not. My, my job here and my goal here was simply to, to uh, raise some significant issues that are, that, are, that are important to Israel, that are happening in Israel. Um, some of them are moving very positively. So, so this is not, a, it's not a gripe session or what's wrong with Israel. But these are the things that I think, again, I, I want to go back to Rabbi Sachs's point. Rabbi Sachs's point was establishing a state was the first responsibility of Israel in 1948. And we did it, and we did a great job at it, and, and we did it against all odds. He says, but the next level, which is what we care about more deeply, just than the state, not to say the state is not important, it's very important, we can't exist without it. So, so how important is that? Super important, but, but that's not enough. For us, we also need a society. Uh, a society is about tzedek and mishpat, and, 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 and opportunity and, 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 and so on. Dignity for all people, very significant things in the Torah. And um, Israel has made tremendous progress in this area. Don't say that Israel doesn't have it. But I think we know that um, because Israel has focused so heavily on its existence, some of these things haven't gotten front, uh, front page uh, uh, um, addressing, and they haven't been the top of the of the of the list of the budget. You know, when when Netanyahu is, or whoever is running, unfortunately, many of the times they're running on still the security, the existence. I'm going to take care of Iran. I'm going to take care of the Palestinians, and so on. Which I don't want to say they're non-issues, but I think I think that the the, the 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 conversation needs to start to shift to, to not only what kind of st are we going to have a state. Um, you know, but rather we have a state. What type of state do we want it to be? What kind of society is, is, is our state going to, to, to have within it? Um, and, I, and that's the type of stuff that gets addressed by the things that we said, the, the opportunities for education, economy, uh, um, what kind of role does Israel play as a, as a leader of the Jews in the world? What kind of relationship do we get to a point where there's a difference between Israelis and Jews? It's a possibility. Some people want to go that way. Uh, we don't want it to go that way. We, we want to feel very connected to that. But this is a, it's, it's a very significant issue that um, I, I don't want to say no one ever talks about it. People do talk about it. But we, I, I believe as Israel gets to 100 and beyond, I think the, 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 the focus, um, I hope, by itself shifts or that the people shift it, but it needs to shift to that. Um, and and that, that's, that's my purpose. And that's, that's the point of of what I'm trying to say is that, um, that, that um, you know, in 100 years from now, you know, in, in 30 years from now, I don't want to say the Holocaust is not significant. It, and the, you know, it's very significant. If you heard my class on Tuesday night, you know how significant I, I feel that it is. But to a certain degree, Israel was established off of the back of the Holocaust and, 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 and the Holocaust played a major role and plays a major role daily, moment to moment in driving the psyche of the state of Israel. I suspect that that will start to happen less as it gets to be 100 and 150 and so on. And, um, you know, as it becomes a, an established place, and, and I think it's already begun to do that, um, these questions start getting asked and these questions start having to get dealt with. It, not that they're not being dealt with at all, they are, but, but I, I believe they're secondary right now to the, the, the security and existence issues. And I think that that's that, that will start to change. I think it has to change. Um, and and I, I think when that does, I think we get to the next level of what the state of Israel is about. Yes, we wanted a state of Israel so that there's a place that Jews could go when they need to, um, but that's not all. We, we want more than that. We want, the we want the state of Israel to be or la goyim. Okay. Those are, my, uh, those are my things. If anyone else wants to pitch in, I'm always happy to, to talk Israel politics uh, and the fun stuff like that.